Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa ati Allah ati Rasulun ulil amri minkum. Alhamdulillah, always a reminder for myself. An abdukul ajisu ta'ifu, miskinu zalim and jahal. But for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and inshaAllah what is faith? We talked uh, last night to get an understanding and this way is based on contemplation and they inspire within the heart that what is faith, what is iman? And Faith is, is not understood anymore and trying to achieve it is not understood anymore. And the turuqs and the immense blessings of the Divine, the Presence for sending guidance. When He wants to guide the servant, He guides them to these realities so that they can achieve their faith achieve and make their faith to be true. So, ma'auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, bismillahir rahmanir raheem, ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, amanu. Though you who believe, more belief, Allah says, infinite amount of belief has to be put upon the heart and that belief has to become solid, rooted deep within the core of the being and the wujud of somebody so that it becomes something that supports them and that they lean upon that reality to traverse the difficulty of this dunya and to achieve what Allah wants the servant to achieve of its paradise realities. That we are a spiritual being sent here for a physical experience. We're not sent for a spiritual experience because we're already spiritual. We're spiritual beings sent for a physical test to return back to our spiritual reality and spiritual maqam and a reminder that when they accompany the awliya and pious people how much faith is misunderstood. That they would listen to the talks of Mawlana Shaykh and say that, Oh look, the shaykh that you're following, he said this, he said this, he said all these things are going to happen, all the events of last days are going to happen and then they didn't happen at that time. And a reminder for ourselves that the events of the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi salam the Armageddon, all the events of immense difficulty. That what Allah wants for us is the station of faith. The event is not important for that person's life, for their reality that they have to achieve. It's echoing on, it's okay. The actual event of a difficulty is not a value to you. What's of value to you is that you believed. So in the reality of belief that and this is from Prophet to the holy companions that whatever the Messenger of Allah brought the level of love the level of belief that was attained was so immense that everything was real for them. Every, every event that Prophet talked about, explained, described, they were witnessing in their heart and in their being. The level of yaqeen, the level of, of immensity of belief. So when Awliya come into our life, this system, its understanding is lost. 
People thinking that if they describe, oh the shaykh described Armageddon is coming, Sayyidina Mahdi Salam is coming, oh look it didn't happen, you were wrong. Mm. That wasn't the idea because material people will confuse you. Say, look these shaykhs are saying these things happen, this sickness happened, this we just described last night. Faith is very individual. Shaykh, give me a du'a that works. What do you mean du'a that works? Every du'a I make it works for me. If it don't work for you because your faith something's wrong. Not my du'a going to work for you. I'm not here to do your testing in your life. This is the example. So last night we talked that, no it's, I follow the teachings, I follow the advice the shaykh is giving, I give the support, I volunteer, I do everything the shaykh has given in the curriculum and that's why they have all these different fingers on their hand, all these operations because you have to be participating, you have to be volunteering, you have to be studying so you, you can't have a shaykh who doesn't teach anything, what are you doing with him? Just you know, staring at each other? There has to be an ilm and a knowledge that you're achieving as a result of all of those actions we described last night that you're doing everything and you know how much you're doing it. And that's why they teach you, don't divert your heart into twenty different locations because you can't be doing that to three people, to four people, to five people. So you won't build any faith. You can do it continue, it's a free world. But you won't have any faith, neither they will know you and you won't know them because you deluded that reality. So what Allah wanted is be firm with one, accomplish something. So then when you keep the focus like racehorse, your blinders on that one, I study from that one. If I follow one who doesn't have a knowledge. It doesn't have any, any way of activity, doesn't have any way of, of being of service and khidmat, you're wasting your time. Find the one that does. And then when you do, your whole focus is on that. And as a result, you're achieving your faith based on your actions. You study this material or you just pretend like I'm listening on the couch and I go do my own thing. Well then I would be pretty scared when you come to read the du'as, they're probably not going to have much effect because you don't really putting anything into it. These are just things that you're just repeating, alhamdulillah it may give a little bit of a lightning, a little bit of things will be pushed away. But that's not what Allah wanted, Allah wanted that you followed them, you read from them, you studied with them, your heart connected to them. When they give you a du'a you can shake the earth. Because you believe and Allah grants your iman, not the shaykh grant, does grant iman. Shaykh grants the teaching, here, I'm the one who you're going to practice with. When you have done all of that, you did, you committed, you learned, as a result Allah deposits muhabbat and love. That love is iman because we said anyone who doesn't have love definitely didn't receive the, the gift of faith. Allah says, you're sincere, you're moving in that direction, I grant you love. And that's why the step of the tariqah is muhabbat al shaykh. The first, first step is to have the muhabbat and love because that's the first gift Allah is going to give is going to live a love into the heart like a light. And that, that love is now the opening of faith and iman. And then you keep the hudur, the presence is that I want to keep learning, I want to keep learning, I want to watch the video on a daily basis, I want to read, I want to absorb myself in the ocean of those knowledges because those are Muhammadan haqqaiqs. As a result of that action Allah gives more light. Then they begin to train, then make your tafakkur, make your contemplation, make your meditation. That light that Allah is depositing is a Muhammadan light in which you become attracted to all these awliya, to all that reality, to reach to the holy companions, to reach to the Ahlul Bayt. 
How can one have a love for Sayyidina Muhammad and not have sadness for his family? So it's like a doctor's office. You know if you're a bright doctor which some people claim to be, if you click the knee you go like this, ring. You have to have a reflex. You can't think about it, if somebody hit your knee your reflex is to move. But if somebody hit your knee and you have no reflex, something wrong with your knees. Means if this didn't hit your heart to hear his grandchildren died your reflex is to cry. Something's wrong and sick in the heart. So this is all these trainings. When you love someone and you hear that their family has been slaughtered, that's the day to have sadness. Why? Because I love that one. So that's a test from Allah That's why Allah want to see what happened in that field and how jinn did this or did that, that's not important. What's important Allah wants to see. How come you love them but I don't see a tear in your eye? And that's why then all of these naat and especially the Farsi nasheeds they describe that Allah says, I am in every emotion of yours. When you cry from this love I am the tear that runs down your cheek. We don't understand who Allah is. Allah is love and muhabbat, I'm closer to you than your jugular vein. It's not a person, it's an emotion, it's a love and muhabbat and Allah I'm the tear that runs from your eyes. For if I wasn't that tear you would have a dead heart. The fact that I'm alive in your heart, every emotion is from me, the love you feel is from me. The tear that runs from you is from me, the breath you breathe from you is from me. You're like a bird flying in the breath of Allah with your belief. How are you moving? How are you sustaining yourself? Allah's Divinely breath you're like a parande, you're a bird flying on that breath. So iman is something we have to build. The shaykh comes to give the tests, give the facilities, give the ability and then they begin to believe. So then they make the du'as, they should feel confident in their heart, Ya Rabbi my love been checked, I've been participating, I'm reciting, of course it's going to work because that's what I believe is going to work. And Allah grant that to work inshaAllah. And that's how the lives of the shaykhs are. Their belief like mountains that can't be understood. Then only Allah come and in their training keep teaching. Mawlana would say that Sayyidina Mahdi is coming, all these things are coming and everybody we ran out to buy boots because we said that it's going to be difficult times. How am I going to have and keep changing tennis shoes? We have our Mahdi boots <laughs> that are big boots and our Imam Mahdi pants that are rugged and they don't tear and a duffel bag and I have my emergency supplies. Because when he said it we believed it and when he said that you better stock food in your home, don't use your head, your head is your biggest problem. Your head is filled with shaitan, your heart Fill it with Rahman, don't think logically, what are you talking about, food going to finish. Now alhamdulillah Allah came and helped and made everybody realize last year food can actually finish. You saw the lines in America, food of plenty, trucks vanished, stores empty from COVID. Allah says, but one shot I can empty all those stores. Then you'll know why that Naqshbandi center has a grocery store <laughs> and you're going to knock on the metal gate and you keep knocking but I didn't let you in. <laughs> I have now an electric buzzer out there. Well, you can't get it then. Of course you're going to believe when you have no food in your, your stomach. The belief was ahead of time to have prepared for that. So then he said that you're not going to see food. Then if you believe, so ten of us are sitting there. Nine are saying, ah, what is he talking about? This is just entertaining. 
But all it takes is for one to believe that no food stock up in my house. Imam Mati's kalam, I'm coming, I got my boots, I got thermal uh, things in case the weather's cold, I have an extra blanket, I have some crackers for my children, I have all the things because he said it, I believed it and I worked on it and acted upon it. And then what happened? Others said, oh look Imam Mati didn't come and you turned to him and said, no he did come, what are you talking about? You didn't, you didn't see him? I said, no. If you believe Allah open your heart and you sit with Sayyidina Mahdi And whatever Mawlana Shaykh said, it happened because we witnessed Sayyidina Mahdi and sit in his association and he did come. And the firasa is so strong that when Mawlana Shaykh would say that this destruction coming, this destruction, this destruction, when you believed it in your heart he showed it. So you see all these buildings, they're all on fire. So with their heart they can drive down and they see where is it destroyed. But they don't want to focus on that, <coughs> they want to focus on, let me be with Sayyidina Mahdi So anything they were teaching it was not the material world understanding that, oh look we're going to like test him and see if these things are happening. No, it was if you believed in what they taught, it happened for you. And I'm telling you you can have a room of 500 people and Allah will send because Allah's promise what? I give you what no ear has heard. Are you thinking this only happens in paradise or in every jama'ah? Somebody has an ability to hear something from their soul, something from angelic sounds, something from vibrations. Most of them hear waswas is from shaitan. So everyone can hear. So Allah was just saying, I make you hear what nobody can hear. Means each experience is individual. Don't think that everyone's gonna hear, oh, oh the angels have arrived. No, the one next to you, right next to you can be hearing the angels and can be seeing in their hearts Sayyidina Mahdi And Allah opening their vision that your eyes see what nobody around you is seeing because I'm rewarding you with belief. When they recite their shaykhs appear, when they recite for Mawlana Shah Naqshaban they're sitting in association in the presence of Mawlana Shah Naqshband and all the forty grand shaykhs of the tariqah. But physical people are saying, where did this happen? I just saw like five guys. They missed completely the concept of faith. Faith was not something physical. Faith was not anything to do with the physical. You use the physical to achieve the malakut and the world of light. And that's what the purpose of the shaykhs were, to tell you disaster coming, use your physical resources, your money, your time, prepare for disaster. As a result Allah granted the light of faith into the heart. So you used what Allah gave you of your material and that's when Ayatul Kareem Allah say, we took from them their dunya and we gave to them in exchange their akhirah. Because we have to use our physical world to believe, otherwise he doesn't just say, I just believe, I believe. No you don't, put your money where your mouth is. You believe you should have food in your home stockpiled and if you have children you should have some supplies and food for them. Where do you plan to, to feed them if you think the power is going to go out and disaster is going to come? So, and I don't believe that, well then how are you going to see Sayyidina Mahdi in your heart? Right? So then all of these and all their testing and all that they're doing is not about everybody to do it because Allah doesn't care if everybody's believing, everybody's going getting the supplies, everybody's contributing, everybody's uh, supporting, everybody's volunteering. No, Allah only cares are you because if you are you're going to see what nobody sees, you're going to hear what nobody hears. 
This is not about a collective vision where we're all going to do it and we're all going to see something. Everyone has just one grave and Allah wants to know, are you ready for your grave? That you're not bringing 10 people with you in the grave where all my partners, where all the people were supposed to help. This is your grave is just you. So then our life especially with the turuqs is every ishara that they're giving, every teaching that they're giving, Allah's watching to see how you act upon it, how you do it, how you implement it as a sign of your faith. And it wasn't for material people to come back and criticize them because that's what shaitan wants, come back and say, look the tariqah was like this and like this and, and they said so many things and they didn't happen. Oh those are his but shaitan, shaitan never going to see anything and not going to achieve anything in paradise. But if Allah want to open for his servant paradise on this earth it's a whole different game. And whatever happened in our life of our testing and difficulties and difficulties, the only regret we have is we didn't do more with the time that we had with our shaykh and what we could have achieved more of those realities is the only regret because you don't know how much time you have with that reality. It doesn't just stay forever, something comes and then it goes. And what you achieve from it, what you can get from it, what you build of yourself had nothing to do with the shaykh but had to do with your belief. His coming, going, nothing to do with you. It's about your belief and what you achieve from it. Whatever I followed, whatever I put in, whatever I contributed, whatever I did for my faith, my shaykh is where he is, condition he is. But what was open for me of my faith from Allah from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and awliyaullah, alhamdulillah, I just wish I would have done more with my youth. So means then this is not the material people coming and pointing, what's like that, what's like that. No, no it's, this, is, this, this is becoming much more complicated. Because everybody on earth is now saying, take this, take that, take this, take that. Oh, which one of those are poisonous? And at the same time if you don't have belief, not the poison to hurt you and to be protected from every type of difficulty, it requires immense belief. One that they're going to inject the poison into you and you don't have any effect. Because that's what Prophet described that for the believer they have a shifa, they have a, a guardian, a, a guidance or guard from Allah to protect them. So whatever is put upon them if Allah is protecting that servant become like water. So then the guys were researching, oh you know in this whole scheme of what they're doing there's actually some of them placebos, right? Because Allah wrote this code. He says, I know, I wrote this, they're going to do all these things for you. And I also wrote in between that some of them are going to be water and sugar. Huh? So when one of his servants show up in the line, Allah's like, water and sugar please. <laughs> it's written, it's written by the one above. But if you're good and you're good with him and you did the best that you can do, and you don't need to be tested with these types of difficulties. So it means everything is about my, my actions and I use my dunya to achieve my faith that I support, I do, I, I participate, I, I volunteer, I recite, I do anything I can to make my faith to be real. Not to make only my dunya to be real. Your dunya is so huge that it's real for you but we're using our dunya, fi dunya hasanat wa akhirah hasanat wa kina adhaba nar that I was supposed to use my dunya to make my faith real. Whatever we did with the shaykh to say we need to do that, we're first on it. We need to put this out, we're first to do it on. 
everything he was saying, the world's gonna collapse, get food, we went and got all the food we could possibly get. Things are gonna happen bad, Y2K, that was it. We had sold everything and bought gold, lots, entire savings was sold because Y2K everything was going to go off. The world was definitely <laughs> going to end. I had bought in all my boots, bags and everything ready. Hey, we're still here. <laughs> the world didn't end. And everybody, oh look, they were putting articles everywhere, look these people who said the end of the world was coming and Y2K, Y2K didn't come. Oh, but that time they opened up all the realities of the Khawjagan masters. From that next week it was all traveling into Uzbekistan and for three years of traveling back and forth into Uzbekistan and all the realities that were opening from that. But the end of my world did end. And that's all that was important. Allah tested, whose world is going to end when that clock hits that 12? Anyone who prepared and prepared and thought, definitely it's ending, definitely it's ending and they're with these turuqs, Allah ended it. But for everyone else it continued going and they were like critical, watch this what happened was like that. But for Ahlul Basira and those whom were studying to be of that reality, their world ended and Allah opened what He wanted to open. So at every moment these tests, these isharats, these guidances are not for the physical ears and physical eyes and not for all your family and friends to come and judge and, and give you all sorts of waswases. That's why now everything is multiplied, every waswas, do this, take that, what you're doing to block your faith that none of this is real, none of that is that. Well because burning people want other people to be burning too. The oven's lonely. Those whom have faith and especially towards last days is like holding fire in their hands. Why? Because they want to keep the belief. But not only spiritual waswas, physical waswasas are now coming from every direction, do this, do this, do this. And that's the difficulty. But everything they're teaching is based on action. When the person takes an action towards the teaching, towards it, don't worry about if the event came, spiritually Allah will make it to come. Because the interest is to be with Sayyidina Mahdi in the spiritual world. We don't need to see burning buildings and be pleased with that. We needed to believe in these things and Allah make it so sit in their company, look at the tajalli, feel the tajalli and the grace of Allah's diwan and the associations of heavenly souls. We pray that Allah open more and more understanding this is something that is uh, something through the tongue but requires to contemplate and it's not something that the mind can understand and somebody next to you say, oh look none of these things happened, they all happened. And Allah opened everything He wanted to open for those whom believe. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon, as salaamun al mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. That's why it's important to listen to these nasheeds when they're saying that we're going through these testings and I don't have a regret because when the servant passes his test and does what he has to do with the best of character and continues to contemplate and meditate then they re witness that Allah did open and Allah is most adil, most just. But what a life if you don't contemplate then you don't know what Allah is giving you. If you're running all your life just through difficulty, difficulty like a heedless person on, 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 the, on the streets of nowhere but you don't live a life to contemplate and to open your heart because when you sit and contemplate you see how much Allah opened of lights, of realities, of immense blessings. You can pray Jummah in Divinely Presence if Allah wants. And if you don't meditate, don't contemplate and don't try to open the heart this just becomes an immense desert 
and an immense desert of difficulty and difficulty and only sadness in this desert. InshaAllah open for us that level of belief and firmness in our belief inshaAllah.